I believe this is turning red and I'm at this point where I don't really watch too many of these. And obviously growing up, I grew up on Disney. I don't know if this is even Disney, to be honest. I just saw this. I thought it was cool to just see this person's revelation. But let me give you guys uh, my little feedback on this overall. And then let's just kind of see how the Holy Spirit leads. So let's tap in, y'all. Let us tap in. So I'm watching this Disney movie with my daughter and kept seeing these Bible references. For symbol in the sky representing for angels. The Red Moon, Joel to 31. Rituals in Disney. She is torn between careless fun with her friend Sin and leaving her past life behind. You have to choose a side, good or evil. She chose the world of sin versus a purified soul. She makes it to this concert. Concerts hold a lot of spiritual energy. Notice they are wearing all white and breaking out of cages. Sky Dome representing the firmament. Coincidentally, they turn into angels, the four angels representing the apocalypse. Revelation 7. The Rapture. The beast has been released upon the earth comes to damn those who chose the evil over God. Oh. Revelations 13, 11. Wow. Wow. By the way, I don't really know that person, uh, it's theology, doc doctrine, or TikTok, but I think this one went uh, viral at over like a million views on TikTok. And I said, let me just like blindly, because I, I only watched the first like few uh, seconds, and I said, let me just watch this and just see. Uh, and, and do this live first off first things first let me just share this one thing do not go to things to try to form your beliefs right like i need to go to the word of god first i gotta go study the truth first because i think so many people like they try to be apologists apologetics they try to uh learn things that are on outside of the bible they try to learn oh what is catholicism what is hinduism what is buddhism what are all these other religions? But they don't even know the word of God. So when this person is discerning, you could tell that they know Bible. They're watching a, obviously, I, I think this, obviously, I think this is wicked. And probably shouldn't have your kids watch this stuff if you really want to cover, cover them. But going into just that alone, we need to know Bible first. They knew Bible. They interpreted movies. And I got into this point where I took like worldly secular movies that I've watched over the years. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I've taken, a, I gotten a whole revelation out of it, which I believe the Holy Spirit can do. Now, some people say that that's not possible, but I truly believe that's what can be done when you know the word. We have to guard ourselves. We have to guard our eyes. We have to guard our hearts. Okay. And yeah, someone's sharing about the Lion King and and, uh, and the Scars character. I, I got a lot of revelations from Lion King. Like even when Mufasa came out of the sky, it was like, I'm your father. Or that moment when, uh, I know I'm kind of like going off, but I'm just sharing you guys just the revelation. When Simba was kicking it with Timon and Pumbaa, right? For a lot of you guys that know Lion King. I grew up off Lion King. When Simba was growing up with Timon and Pumbaa, and then he didn't know he was a king because he was hanging out with them and they didn't know he was a king. 
So they formed and helped him feed into that identity of who he wasn't. And here comes somebody from his past trying to tell him, you're king. And that kind of shows us that you got to know and you got to be around people that can encourage you and launch you towards God's calling, and God's purpose. Again, when I get, get into stuff like this, we can't be going into these movies not knowing the word of God. We can't be going into these places not knowing the word of God. It's kind of like unseasoned saints trying to go out there and evangelize, but they have no backings when obviously you see the people that know more scripture than you, know more Bible than you. There's a training ground. Just like when people are in the military, they go through training. They go through boot camp. They go through specific a specific way to be trained up in the Lord. That's why the Bible tells us to not raise our children, but to train our children. Like he was showing about the Joel chapter two prophecy, right? In these last days and how the moon turned red. And then he started sharing about revelations and stuff. Watching a secular worldly movie and getting Bible revelations, man, you, you are walking and talking Bible, bro. <laughs> like praise God, you know the word of God. But also, we can't continue to be clinging onto these things and allowing these things to entertain us. Gain the revelations. Let the Lord lead you. And I get it. We're in a war between our flesh and our spirit daily. And there's a time where, like, I get it. You can't just be praying all the time. You got to rest sometimes and you just want to relax. Fine. If that's your way of relaxing, go ahead and let the, let the Lord lead you. Okay, that's going to be between you and God. Everyone has different mantles. Everyone has different seasons in ministry. Everyone is going. But now I'm not giving you a license to willfully sin or a license to go out there and just do it. Like, just be led. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's times in our life where we got to enjoy, but don't allow it to consume you. And don't allow, allow it to be above God. Like, people are going to always ask me, oh, should I play video games? Should I play video games or this or that? If you can play video games for eight hours a day, and in the middle of that eight hours, you got to go bathroom, but the video games is so good that you, you want to hold, you know, you want to hold it because it's just so good. But then when you're in church for only an hour, an hour and a half, and you const you just go to the restroom just to go just cause you have to, but man, being in the house of God is so good. Like you got to check your intentions. You got to check what you're putting above God. Now, some people will go to the far spectrum and say, no, no video games at all. It's going to ruin you. It's going to mess you up. And then I can't, I can't really come against somebody's ministry when it comes to video games. I can't come against somebody's ministry when all they, you know, maybe it might be a way for them to win souls to the kingdom. I never know. Whenever you put anything above God, that's where you're going to have to like really check yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Like that's the saying, like just check your heart. Is God really above everything in your life? And I get it. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I got to check myself. I got to check my ambitions. I want to know, is it selfish ambitions? Is this selfishness? Is this really to glorify just me and myself? Or is this really for your, your glory, oh God? Like that keeps us humble. That keeps us in states where, man, we just continue to, to humble ourselves before the, the mighty hand of God, right? And yes, there's seasons where sanctification takes place. There's seasons where you go into deep fasting and God tells you to let go of these things. And I get it. It's tough. But there is a price to pay when following Jesus. Salvation is free. Oil costs money. Oil costs money. And I say that because back in the day, oil was costly. The oil is costly with our time, our energy, right? The things that we have to surrender to pay the price. There is a price for oil. There is a price to run and do ministry and launch in this moment, in this season. Salvation's free, y'all. So you guys can, you know, you guys can have that salvation. Salvation is free, but oil, there's a price to pay if you want to be able to allow the anointing. And that's what, that's that's really what it is. The, the anointing is the power of God to flow through you. That's what the anointing is. There is a cost to being able to be used as a disciple in ministry to expand God's kingdom, offer his glory. So what do y'all think? What do you guys Think about watching these things and have you gotten revelations from specific movies you've watched that aren't definitely. And I, you know what I like? I, and I'll close off with this. I love how there's a lot more godly movies like Jesus movies coming out, Bible things with that aren't super, super old. It's it's like, yo, it's like they'd be balling on a budget with these. And I get it. Those were launched in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. But 
it's time for some some kingdom creatives to rise that are getting backed up financially and getting creative and getting the right connections, right? The Bible says this in the book of Proverbs as I close out, your gifts make room for you and bring you before great men. So when you operate out of your gifts, I believe it's Proverbs 18, your gifts make room for you and bring you before great men. I pray for those connections. I pray for the Solomons that allow people to hear about you and Queen Sheba's to come in, hear, heard about your wisdom, heard about the God that you serve, step into your territory, and they are so blown away by the wisdom and how God is using you that they will bless you with spices, they will bless you with resources that no man has been able to see before. They will bless you with resources like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, y'all.